August was a hectic month for us, but that did not stop the community from dropping new software. These are the new top 10 applications introduced in August 2025. In no particular order, let's get started with number 10. Number 10 on our list is Linkar. Linkar is really interesting because what it does is it automatically organizes your media folder from a source to a destination. Usually an organizational container will move things over or just do renames and that's not what this does. This uses hard linking to move from a source folder to a destination folder. Hard linking means that it's basically creating a shortcut. So in this case, it's not doubling your media files. It's just showing you a destination folder that has better named and organized files. Unfortunately, there is no UI for Linkar. The way it works is we have a Docker Compose file that gets launched here and just needs very little bit of modification to work depending on what your sources and destinations are. And you have a configuration file that says how these things should be organized and renamed. The way it would work is you'd have two folders for your media in this case, say something like TV and TV organized. The path to source in this case is going to be your TV directory and your path to organize is going to be the TV organized directory. This allows you to take something that starts like this, for example, media slash TV and this naming scheme, which is meant to have no spaces or certain characters removed or escaped for ease of searching on command line to something like this, which is a little bit more human readable. And this is customizable in the config.json. This allows you to have the naming scheme look like anything you want without messing with the original files and while keeping all of your folders organized. Next on the list is number nine. Number nine on the list is a platform called Ship, Ship, Ship. Basically a Kanban board. So you'll see here, I can click and drag these things, but I also have the ability to launch public website updates or newsletters depending on the events that I change. So this is unique in the Kanban world. It's not just another Kanban. It's a Kanban with the idea that every single time you make a change, you have the option of pushing this to followers, community, teams, whatever it is, in order to get feedback from them on how the changes are going. The cool part about this is even within tests, I can do things like markdown here. So I have the ability to add all these things with the standard markdown text that everybody's used to using, things like tags and dates as well to this card. And I can go ahead and save this. And now you can see here are my changes. So there's some pretty cool stuff on this site that makes it unique and different from other Kanbans that I've seen. The interface is definitely very pretty. They have a public site here. You can go ahead and do all kinds of customization for branding and tags. This is the newsletter setup where you can build subscribers and look at your history. There's a lot of functionality here for people who want to do Kanban, but also publicize things that are going on. This is described as a modern self-hostable changelog and roadmap platform that helps you share product updates with your community and gather feedback through future voting. Next up is number eight. Number eight is PyDash. PyDash is extremely simple. Basically what it does is give you this dashboard that allows you to add these cool little cards in here that are connected to PyHole instances. On TrueNAS, I set up three instances of PyHole, a primary, a secondary, and a tertiary. I just have them running on different ports right now. They're not actually doing anything. I just set them up to connect them to the dashboard so you can see what's going on. If they were running, you'd be able to see all the statistics from each one of these PyHole instances. The cool part is as long as your PyHole is accessible from wherever PyDash is running, you can get it on the dashboard which means I can have these on different servers in different locations. If I had something like TailScale set up and my PyDash was able to go through the TailScale nodes in order to find all the different Pi holes that I've installed. This does one thing very well, and I really like the fact that it's just so simple like this. It also has an optional file that you can add into the configuration that you can see on the wiki page to add this to your mobile PWA apps. So if you wanna use this from your phone, it also looks really, really great from mobile. Next on the list is number seven. Number seven on our list is DocPeak. DocPeak is a container that gives us this really nice dashboard to show us which containers are running, which stack they're in, and which ports are exposed. We can see here, we can sort by the containers that have updates available. We can check for updates. We can change our theme. We can go up to GitHub. I can just search by container name, for example. Here's my Nginx proxy manager. If I want to, I can click on one of these ports. It's all live and it'll take me directly to the address. I can organize this by container name. And most importantly, I can sort by port number. This is a big deal for me because I have like 50 containers running. So sometimes I don't remember which ports I've picked for stuff. So by sorting like this, I can go ahead and see all my ports as they're exposed. And if I'm wondering if 8080 is exposed, we can see here that 8080 is exposed for my Qubitorn image. So I can see everything here that contains these strings. In the event I click on the check for updates button, it's gonna go ahead and scan all these container images in the background. When it finds updates, we're gonna see something that looks like this. It's gonna tell me what the updates are, but it won't actually update the container, which is great because I don't want it to break things in the event that there's breaking changes for updates. It just lets me know what updates are available. We can see here that this is a very clean interface. It shows me everything I wanna know. Next up is number six. 
Number six on our list is cron master. Cron jobs are usually scripts that run at a predetermined time or with predetermined repetitions to do things on your system so you don't have to do them manually. Usually you have to do this through the command line and with Linux, not everybody's comfortable with that. Cron master gives us this really nice UI that allows us to go ahead and create tasks as well as scripts. So let's start by looking at this dashboard. On the left, we get this really nice system overview. Everything here says optimal. We have uptime, memory, CPU, GPU, network. In the center, I have my schedule task. I have the option to see more than one user. And I also have this other tab over here for scripts. This is a pretty amazing amount of functionality for something that really is kind of annoying through the command line. All Linux users have to go and look at cron eventually because it is a really great way to automate your server tasks. But this makes it so much more bearable. And I think if you're a beginner and are not used to using cron jobs, this is an absolutely incredible way to simplify what used to be kind of annoying for system administrators to keep their Linux boxes up to date. Up next is number five. Number five on our list is Tractor. Tractor is an amazing container that's used to track vehicle updates and maintenance logs. If you're like me and you may do work on your own car, or maybe you just wanna keep your own personal records for work that is done on your car, Tractor might be a great container for you. I could add multiple vehicles the same way and see them as cards show up here. Now we can see both vehicles listed side by side. I can click them to select them and show their records below. Below I have a few tabs here for each car. Let's select the Civic and go ahead and add a maintenance record. When I now click the maintenance tab, we can see the record for my oil change at my local repair shop. I could also add insurance, pollution certificates, or just look at the overall dashboard. Because I don't have a ton of records here, we don't see any mileage over time or any fuel cost over time. It's a pretty basic interface, but it's very nice. It's well made. It's super easy to add and remove things. I can go ahead and delete the Acura just like that. And now I'm just down to the Civic again. Very easy to manage. It's simple, but it's effective, and I really like it. Next up is number four. Number four on the list is Image Drop. Image Drop performs one very simple function that I think is actually pretty necessary. This allows you to upload images into your image library from an external source. It's really easy for me on my phone to take a picture and have it auto sync into image in the background without me doing anything. However, if somebody else takes pictures of me or something I want, getting those images into my image library is kind of a pain. They either have to text me that image, which may involve compression, or maybe they have a Dropbox somewhere where I can get an uncompressed raw original image. However, Image Drop closes the gap of figuring out how to get other people's pictures into my image library by giving them a link where they can upload the files they want directly into my library. So using this interface, they can go ahead and click choose files or do a drag and drop and it will upload directly into my image library into a default album of my choice. I think for somebody who takes a bunch of pictures that's not on my phone or not on one of my devices that I want in my library, this is an absolutely necessary, simple, very straightforward and very functional container. Next up is number three. Number three on our list is Aggregar. Aggregar is a way to keep your Plex dashboard fresh by bringing collections and automatically inserting it into Plex to show you other options available besides just the Plex recommendations. This is a really amazing way to make sure your media library stays fresh by going ahead and giving you other options besides the Plex defaults. Right now, you'll see here that we have the option to click and drag and move and hide some of the original Plex defaults, but we also have the ability to add collections here. If I look at my collection source, We'll see here I have the ability to integrate multiple sources like my overseer requests, my Totelli statistics, my track lists, if I have an API, letterbox lists, TMDB or IMDB. For example, if I wanted to integrate an IMDB list here, I can go ahead and say the IMDB popular list and I want to integrate this into my movies library homepage. So I'm going to go ahead and create collection. And now we can see here the popular movies from IMDB is a new option in my movies. Once this is done, I go ahead and sync my collection and it'll automatically push it to my Plex dashboard. When I come over here, you'll see here it's all the way the top and I can click and drag and move this anywhere I want to reorganize it on my Plex dashboard for all of my users. We can quickly see how powerful this can be. If I go ahead and hide just the regular defaults by Plex, I can go ahead and add all sorts of collections as well as custom collections if I want, as well as requests from my user all directly to the home screen. So instead of me just going with whatever Plex recommends, I have the ability to really curate what, what shows up on my recommended list for Plex. Next up is number two. Number two on the list is Harbor Guard. Harbor Guard fills a very needed niche that scans Docker containers for vulnerabilities. You can see on my dashboard, I've already done a manual scan on my Docker containers and I've come up with quite a few vulnerabilities. We see on the dashboard here, the image vulnerability analysis. We get this really cool overlay that shows us how many vulnerabilities are out there and their critical nature. So in this case for dockage, it shows six critical vulnerabilities. So when I click this for dockage, it comes up with the scans across all tags. So when I go ahead and 
click this, I can see exactly what CVEs were found. So some of the critical ones are something like CVE 2025-6969, which is an integer truncation SQL light. If I go ahead and click this little arrow here, I can see all of the places that will explain to me what this CVE is. I can see that CVE 2025-6965 is a vulnerability in SQL light versions where the number of aggregate terms could exceed the number of columns available, leading to memory corruption issue. And it was in fact given a severity of high at a 7.2. So this is a really cool way I can go in and check and see what's going on under the hood. So this gives you a pretty comprehensive scan option for all of your Docker containers. This is a pretty amazing container because I think that a lot of people ask security questions about Docker and about how secure these containers actually are. Last up is number one. Number one is Netgoat. Netgoat is a container that's built to run exactly like Cloudflare tunnels, but with an additional functionality built in of things like reverse proxying, certification management, analytics, all built into one UI. Here I've entered a testdomain.com just to show you guys the example. Here we see the overlay of all of the sample data that's been created for my testdomain.com. My total visits, returning visits, unique visits, average session time, visitors, and caching total all shown with these really cool displays. If I go over to the DNS, we can see here a standard DNS table for my A records and some fake content and proxying status for these fake IP addresses. From here, I can go ahead and create DNS records directly without having to leave this dashboard, the name, the content, and the note if I want to do a type A record or any of the other subtypes that you would have to create. Over on proxies, we have the reverse proxy list. Currently it's empty, but if I want to add a new reverse proxy, I can go ahead and input my slug and my target and choose the port that I want and hit save and build a reverse proxy directly into this tunnel. Jumping over to certs. We have some fake certificate data right here to show you some less encrypt certs, some self-signed certs, its status, the expiry status, and the type of certificate that it is. This does all the certificate management for us directly through this interface. Analytics show us some fake data about some people who have been visiting the site, showing us requests over time, error rates, and our top subdomains by request. We also have a web application firewall. We can see here that our web application firewall status is enabled, and we have a list of fake rules here with some switched on and some switched off. We can can go over to the CAPTCHA side. Looking at this CAPTCHA tab, we have the ability to use a CAPTCHA provider like Cloudflare, the challenge type, and set the difficulty if we want to use this configuration to set our CAPTCHA settings. Lastly, we have error tracking, which show us the logs of the errors that we're seeing within our website in our testdomain.com. Right now, this container is under heavy development. I was lucky enough to be able to talk to the developer and get him to set up this demo site for me so I can click through some of these things and show you what it's going to look like as it gets closer to being finished. His goal is to have this up and running at least in some form by December of this year. So we can start playing with it with real data attached to actual domains. And I can show you guys what this can look like when I build it into one of the domains for servers at home. For right now, I wanted to show you this container so you can see what this could look like when it's fully built and actually attached to a real domain. I think it has a great amount of ambitious features built into it. If this developer can keep developing at the pace that he is and get this thing off the ground sometime this year, I think it could be a very valid replacement for either Cloudflare Tunnels, Nginx Reverse Proxy Manager, or something like Pangolin. So that is it for the August top 10 best new container video. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Hopefully this video doesn't get taken down like the last one. Please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Leave us tons of comments about what you think should be in here, maybe what should have been removed, some other containers that you think might really benefit from more attention or development, or just one of the ones that you thought was your favorite from this list. If you guys wanna have a discussion about it with us, please jump on our Discord for servers at home. And if you wanna thank me personally, please buy me a coffee.